Welcome to another edition of Regina District Industry Education Council. Our technology spotlight today is with Marco Coppola from Raven. So, Marco, what do you do? I work as a business development manager for Raven Industries, which is a quite large technology company uh, focused on solving some of the world's greatest challenges. And so, you have a tagline though. Uh, we, we, do have, we do I have a tagline. tagline. I almost said it's, we solve great challenges. Uh, oh. And it's true. I mean, I, I became a part of Raven through acquisition and learning about the culture and what they do there was really exciting for me because you see the name of the company, you see the slogan, and then when you actually get to experience it, uh, it really provides a lot of excitement to somebody because you look at the things that we're doing in agriculture or in aerospace or in engineered films and you say, well, we're, we really are solving some pretty great cha challenges and that requires some great people to do it. Yeah, before we get into that, because I want to know about each one of those, um, you said by acquisition, so that means you were at a company that got acquired and now you work at that bigger entity, correct? That's right. Yeah. So what was the smaller company before? Uh, so the company that I worked for prior was Dot Technology Corp. And what we did there is uh, we build autonomous agriculture equipment. So for a lot of people that, that don't know agriculture, one of the biggest challenges that they're facing is a skilled labor shortage. So in Canada alone, last year we had about, or just over 50,000 jobs in agriculture that went unfilled. And one of the ways to address that is to introduce autonomous equipment, something that allows the farmer to not necessarily uh, leave their farm, but leave the field per se and have this equipment running for them. So they, they're still entirely in control of what this equipment is doing when it's in the field. They just don't have to be behind the wheel for you know, 12, 16 hours a day. Sounds like it's safer and there's a lot of benefits to that. There's definitely a lot of opportunity in the autonomous egg space. The other uh, quote you'd mentioned earlier was, how many unfilled jobs do you, as a company, you're hiring right now? Yeah, so I was, I was just looking to say, and it's pretty consistent with you know, the way that we're trying to grow the organization and fill these important roles to, to solve those great challenges. And just before you got here, I was looking, there's about 34 job postings that we had up on our website. Like, like, like I, I laughed because I was like, I don't, like, I don't know any organization that's hiring that many people. That's really cool. Yeah, it's it's exciting. So, Dot, but that Dot wasn't. What was the over? It was Seedmaster, correct? Uh, it was the the brainchild of Seedmaster to begin with. So, uh, Norbert Bojo, owner of Seedmaster, started a sister company, Dot Technology Corp, the company that I started working for, um, and what it was meant to do was address those challenges that they were seeing in the ag space, which was related to skilled labor shortages. Cool, and ironically uh, enough, we're at your office that's about half a block down from yeah, your original right office. Yeah, from where I originally was. <laughs> so I've moved around quite a few times, some title changes, some responsibility changes, but but overall I haven't moved too far. Same place for lunch. Yeah, <laughs> the ice much. house. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, business development, what, is, what does that do? Like what's, uh, what's What's the day in the life of Marco? Uh, the best part about my job is that the day in the life changes all the time. You know, I mean, you have some consistencies where you wake up, have coffee with your wife and go into work. But once you get to work, uh, the challenges that you're trying to solve there are different every day. So most recently, the, the building that we're sitting in right now is Raven's most recent headquarters expansion into Canada. So in addition to our, our main headquarters in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, uh, we have a location in Brazil as well as in the Netherlands. And now Canada, as of September 2020, uh, became our fourth headquarter location. Cool. Yeah. And I think there was an article written about it must have hit, I don't know if it's front page leader post, but it's pretty big news because massive company coming here to Little Old Regina. Yeah, which is, is pretty cool. It's a very exciting project to be a part of and, you know, focusing on that business development side of it and developing Raven's business into the Canadian market and establishing more of a presence here, not just for autonomous agriculture, but for a lot of our core products, which would include, you know, field computers for tractors or, uh, you know, boom controls and things like that on sprayers. We, we have a lot of products that, you know, we just need to continue to make the market aware of and, and grow that business for Raven, not just in Canada and you know Australia and the other markets that we're into, but I mean, we're, we really are a global company. Cool. So so you're developing business, is that meeting big companies? You're, uh, you said earlier, it's not just sales, it's more so developing 
different ways that the company can grow in Canada? Yeah, and that, that could include a number of things from figuring out which markets we need to be in next to engaging with our customers to see what types of products they need to, to meet their demands, which are ever changing. Cool. And so you could be running a focus group with a lot of your you know, grower partners or dealers and learning from them to figure out what needs to be included in your next product iterations or next launches uh, to taking a look at you know the growing markets and different world areas like wow. Canada, Canada we always say you know why Saskatchewan we set up a headquarters here that's very exciting but in Saskatchewan we have a little over 40 percent of all of Canada's farmland located right here so it really is a perfect location to expand uh, you know our precision egg business yeah, well I'm thinking if you're a, an egg leader in the world you probably have a presence here or at least you'd want to have a presence here just to experiment ideas absolutely that's really interesting um, to be a de business development um, role, can you go back into, say, university or high school? Is there, like I'm trying to figure out, like, how do you prepare someone for that role, or is it kind of trial by fire? Do you learn on the job? Were there some classes or things that you took or, or skills that really helped out? Um, it sounds like you, you said focus group earlier, so I'm like, oh, it's public speaking as well. Then there's a whole bunch of different roles that you you have in your current position. Do you ever look back and say, oh, it was that class that helped me the most, or? I, I don't know if it was ever really a class as much as it was, you know, individuals that coached me throughout university. And I mean, I, I took business, uh, you know, marketing, uh, entrepreneurship and economics, and, and then after university, some international trade education. Cool. And I would say like the one skill that I've probably leveraged the most, uh, regardless of role or, or position or responsibilities has been uh, being resourceful. And that's what I would encourage anybody else to focus on is, you know, being resourceful, trying to have the abilities to find the answers. And then what'll happen in the opportunities that you have is you'll have problems that are put on your desk or, or tasks to do in a given day. And you'll always be able to uh, figure it out or at least be heading in the right direction to, to solving those problems. And wow. the benefit to any organization is that you end up being, you know, a utility person. You can put anything in front of that person and they're going to do their best to at least figure out a way to to respond. So I'm like, go to problem solving class. That's yeah, go to problem solving class. <laughs> University, in my mind, it, it doesn't really give you all the answers. What it does is it teaches you how to find them, right? It teaches cool. you how to be resourceful and you know, find the information that you need and formulate yeah. your own opinions. And On that that's... note, where so you went to University of Regina? Yeah, I went to the University of Regina. I did study for one semester uh, abroad in Rome. I have some family that lives close to close to Rome, so that no was way. a good experience for me. We didn't actually, through the University of Regina, we didn't have a partnership with uh, the University in Rome. It was, it was in Florence, I believe, which was a little bit further away from where my family was located. So uh, having an Italian background, I know I don't look Italian. <laughs> the, the name is. I didn't say it. Yeah. Um, I, I was able to apply directly to the University in Rome and got to you know, take a semester there. I was fortunate that a lot of my classes transferred over and I was still able to, to graduate on time. Cool. What was your favorite class in Rome? Well, history, probably. Believe it or not, oh, history is my favorite class there because you know, you got to, you didn't get just, just get to read about you. You got to walk past a lot of it. <laughs> like you don't read in a book. You literally walk past the building. Right, like my walk to school, <laughs> I, I would deliberately try and take a different path to class every day because you would walk past like apartment buildings that were older than you know Canada so <laughs> it was pretty cool yeah. that's funny that that was the one comment I remember in the very the only time I've ever stayed in Europe the we went to a hotel and the guy laughs where are you from we're like Canada he's like this building's older than your country yeah <laughs> okay okay yeah. thank you um what were you like in high school where'd you go to high school I went to high school at the boldest boldest yeah. oh yeah. I went to no kids so <laughs> take, it e take it easy. Uh, what were you like in high school? Were you really involved? SRC? Were you part of clubs? What did you do? No, I wasn't involved, uh, you know, in any like extracurricular stuff throughout school. Um, what it, I spent a lot of my time working. I mean, I've, I've, I've been gamefully employed since I think I was 14, formerly, and you know, started working on other odd jobs before that. Uh, but that was my focus and it always was through university too. I mean, I, I think all through university, I was always working 25, 30 hours a week as well. And oh, wow. Yeah, so some people think, you know, it doesn't necessarily give you the opportunity to focus on your studies if you're working that much, but if you're really paying attention to the business that you're at, so you could be bagging groceries as your you know, part-time job, but you do still get a lens into what that business is like if you choose to, to take oh, a look yeah. through it. And so if you can take some of the opportunities to apply what you're learning to thinking about it in your workplace. I think you get a lot of give and take between both. It's for sure. It helped me out at least. 
What was your favorite job in university? Oh, what was my favorite job? I used to work for an electronics retailer uh, when I was in university. And the reason that I liked it so much is that it was commission based. And so I could work a, uh, <laughs> a few hours in the evening, uh, but make you know more than I would if I worked there at a different place for, for eight hours. Just hawking day. games to people that don't need them. Yeah, I also bartended <laughs> in university, which was a lot of fun. You know, cocktails is one of my hobbies. Easy as figuring out new concoctions and, and oh, stuff cool. like that. So, yeah. Cool, yeah. so you worked a lot. So well, that makes a lot of sense though, with business development, you have to have that attitude of, there are no weekends or evenings, and I'm sure that you're used to working odd hours or way too much. For sure. 25 uh, to 30 hours through university? Yeah, throughout most of it, for Like, sure. this might be too much of a work ethic. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy what you're doing, it's really easy. It's, uh, I mean, I've, I think right from the start, I've had the luxury of really enjoying what I do every day, and that makes it easy cool. to, to enjoy, you know, if you have to work on an evening or on a weekend just to, to get something done, it, it really doesn't feel like work because A, you get to learn something and B, you're contributing to something pretty meaningful. For sure. Oh, that's great. Um, did you go into university right out of high school? I didn't, no. No, I worked uh, I worked at a bank, a financial institution for a couple of years out of high school before I dove right into it. And that was probably a good thing for me at the time. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I got into marketing because I thought that you know, that seemed like a lot of fun. I love the case studies that you got to read about companies bringing uh, products to market and the unique ways that they did that. But uh, the benefit that university gave me was teaching me that marketing was so much more than that. It's not just, you know, trying to put your brand in front of a customer. It's figuring out pricing strategies and different distribution channels. And there's, there's a lot that's involved there if you choose to really participate in it. For sure. Wow. Um, I'm like, what do you do for hobbies? Like, how do you have free time? <laughs> I, I still, like, I mean, it's all about... I'm like, nah, I saw you at the golf course last yeah, year. Exactly. Golf is definitely one of my hobbies. I love golfing. Uh, Saskatchewan, we don't get as many opportunities as you might in other places. But I mean, that, you know, lends itself to my other hobbies, which would be travel in a, you know, pre or post pandemic world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, that's, I, I love doing those things, spending time with my wife and my family and friends. It's. Pretty, pretty basic hobbies. I did take up reading, surprisingly. Not I took through, up reading. <laughs> not, through, not in high school and not throughout university. I, I never read much, but after that, I really got into it. Join the it, team. Started with, it started with I, like a New Year's resolution where I, you know, I'm gonna try and read a book every month or so. And then I, I realized, oh, this actually is enjoyable. You know, they, they weren't lying to me. In university, it's good. <laughs> but same story, hated you. I used to make fun of people for reading because I thought they were nerds. <laughs> and now I'm like a self-declared, no, 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 I'm a reading nerd. Um, but I think university teaches us to read the wrong stuff. Like you're not picking up textbooks to read now. No, no, that's true. What's your favorite book you read recently? Recently, probably Principles by oh. Ray Dalio. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, actually started to document my own and what I loved about that book and what I like about principles is it kind of formally grounds your behaviors. All, all of your behavior is kind of based off of what your principles are and you can share that with anybody. So in, in an organization like ours where things are changing rapidly, whether it's from you know the products that you're offering to the market or to the people that you're working with shoulder to shoulder, if they understand your principles, right, they're gonna have a really good understanding of how you work and how you operate day to day. Yeah, unreal. What's, why did I take from that book? Is it candor? Like the, Radical candor. Radical or? candor, just being really, really honest with people, Yeah. but for their best interest, not your own. And that, uh, that influenced our whole team this year to start having honest feedback sessions which is a lot harder than we thought. Yeah, <laughs> but important. <laughs> they yeah. suck, they yeah. suck. <laughs> um, podcast, do you listen to podcasts at all? Uh, the one that I picked up was called The Journal, uh, and it's basically just you know a half hour segment on what's happening in business and in the world. Uh, but no, other than that, not cool. much on podcasts. Sorry, that was, uh, my, my, that's a side just for Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I'm not on the road as much anymore. Uh, oh, so like, when I was on the road, I would do a lot of audiobooks or listen to a podcast, but and then I'm not traveling as much by road. Today. Yeah, I guess, but like pre-pandemic, were you or were you on like talking to farms lots or talking to different communities lots? Uh, my role would be... focused a lot more on like the business relationships that we would have with partners, whether it would be like another OEM manufacturer that we partner with, or you know different dealers, for example. Uh, not as much on the the grower side, though we did get involved in that, but. Uh, when I was doing a little bit more marketing work, I would travel a lot. You know, you're gone almost one week or two every month, uh, going to a different trade show, and, and you get to go to some fun places. You know, like Germany and, and oh, stuff cool. like that. So, yeah. So is that your not favorite, as much anymore? Is that your favorite place that you've been? Germany for work. <laughs> for work. Uh, 
Germany was cool because they can put on an amazing trade show. Uh, so, you know, every other year they have this agricultural trade show called Agritechnica and oh, it draws, cool. you know, over half a million people there. It's, I love the name already. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Even, you know, <laughs> other countries around there will hire German organizations to uh, run their trade shows because they, they do a really good job of it. Very efficient. I know that. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very efficient. That's funny. Um, so tell me a little bit more about Raven. You said there's three specific industries that you guys are in, which fascinate me. Uh, what's the one headquartered out of Regina though? Uh, so this one is going to be our applied technology, applied technology division or ATD. So uh, what we do is primarily precision agriculture products. Uh, so I was mentioning, you know, our autonomous systems that we offer uh, to field computers, to boom controls and, and different things like that. That's what we would cater to in the precision ag industry. But we do have two other uh, primary divisions, uh, EFD or engineered films. And they would make like high tensile uh, strength films to protect Earth's natural resources. So like the anything from grain bags I see out in the field? Yeah, it could be things like that or things like, you know, uh, water retention liners. There's a, a lot of applications for it. Interesting. And, uh, and you had said earlier that you, Raven has a big champion of the STEM program of hiring and and yeah. was did you say 50 percent of your staff yeah about 50 percent of our staff at any given time are employed in stem related jobs so, <laughs> so like you guys have <laughs> got to be on record the one of the smartest companies technically in the world i like that's to, incredible I, I like to think so yeah <laughs> on so, average like <laughs> so between you know science technology engineering and math uh out of the you know 34 job postings that are up on our site today uh, i would say probably 70 percent of them are in stem related fields yeah so that's a call to go get your math sciences, engineering. Do you do you stand out because you're the business guy to the group? No, do no, they, no. Because no. I mean, like, do they razz you to the makes, engineers? Yeah. <laughs> a, a little bit, but one of the exciting parts about my job is I get to, uh, you know, take a look at these amazing things that we're developing and the problems that we're solving, and then on the business development side, figure out you know proper ways to take those things to market. Right? It's the, it's that bridge between figuring out you know what are the what's the market asking for and how can we deliver that. And, but maybe to me, like you're in that regard, you're like a translator. You see their world and you can translate it to the greater population. Uh, in a sense. Sometimes, <laughs> well, and, and I guess the other thing I, 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 we need to talk to students about, if you're not into coding, if you're not into computers, if you don't want to be behind a screen all day, like I'm, I saw your office, I don't think you're behind the screen all day long, are you? No, no, definitely not. I'd say, like I said, my, my day to day changes all the time and the, the problems that I get to focus on solving are definitely different than what our engineers would be focusing on. But there, it I sounds mean, like I'd argue place, no, no less significant. But that's what I mean. There's yeah. a place for every, if you love technology, you want to be behind a screen, it sounds like there's a big place here for you. Absolutely. But if you just love a fast growing company and it's almost like, take the Marco career path, find growth companies and just hang on. Or like we talked about earlier, it's probably because what you're doing. Um, well, and like I said, just try and be resourceful, right? Like the, it's a it's a skill that's transferable, right? If, if you can be kind of a go-to person for a lot of different scenarios, because even if you might not have the answer, you can probably figure out a way to find it. Uh, people are going to lean on you quite often and, and you can take that skill anywhere. For sure. And honestly, I, I love that attitude. It's like, forget about your job title, solve problems. Yeah. I think that was a, early on at Facebook, there was a note on the wall that said, not my job doesn't exist here. So like, if you said that, you probably weren't going to last long there. But it's that idea of being resourceful. I mean, with, the, with this being a, a new expansion here for us in Canada, we have a lot of people wearing that type of hat because you don't have the luxury of starting with, uh, you know, a full fleet of employees to support the business here. Uh, you know, you don't have people working in reception or managing vendors or, do, or doing a lot of those things. So everybody chips in and, and has that resourceful attitude, which is, you know, definitely an underlying character to the culture that we have. Well, and I, uh, my next question was going to be on the culture here and previously um, at the company before, there's got to be something there that's keeping you here. You're not somebody that's just going to sit by and, you know, work at a boring job. I feel like you've created or you're a part of this fast moving, get stuff done kind of attitude. Um, what would you blame that on? What would you, and I've, I've never met any or anybody else that's worked here. So I actually, I don't know your culture, but how to, how, like you've lasted this long. Well, the one thing that hasn't changed throughout all of that over the last three, four years is that 
the vision of addressing problems in agriculture hasn't changed, right? So, you know, there's been some organizational changes, there's been some shifts in what we're doing specifically with uh, product, but the goal has always been to address that labor shortage in agriculture and make farming more efficient and more profitable in general. And so that's kind of what you, oh, get, cool, behind, you get behind a vision, right? And then yeah. the rest of it is just, you know, kind of the day-to-day -day stuff. So I fell in love with this project in uh, 2017 at a trade show when, when this autonomous platform was first introduced to the market. And I first, because I, I don't come from a farming background at all. Um, and I got the opportunity to learn about the problems that producers were facing and how this piece of technology was going to address that. And that's kind of when I fell in love with it. So a few months after that, there was an opportunity to join the marketing team and the rest was history. It's, and you know, that's what we've been focusing on bringing to the market ever since. Do you remember that trade show? Do you remember the people? I, I specifically remember a picture of something with like, was it a half circle of people watching? And it was almost like, it was like a sideshow at a at the carnival or something. Yeah, it was, it was something no one had ever seen before. Yeah, but yeah. We, we knew it was gonna happen. It was just one of those moments of, do you remember that? Do you remember the, where you, you weren't working the trade show, you were just there. Yeah, I was just there. I was, I was representing a different organization at the time, Saskatchewan Trade and Export. And I'd done some work with, you know, Seedmaster and with Dot in the past. And uh, seeing that introduced to the market was cool because everybody knew that in order to address the issue of um, a skilled labor shortage in, in agriculture, autonomous farm equipment was coming. The form that it came in is what people weren't expecting. So that, you know, open U platform that looks nothing like a tractor for, for all intents and purposes is what kind of had everybody's jaw dropping and people, and people saying, you know, treating with a little bit of skepticism straight through to, you know, how can I get this on my farm tomorrow? <laughs> I'm sure you had a couple of those. Yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience. It was, it was fun to be there. Has the job ever got to the point where it's too much, got too hard or there's too many problems to solve? Uh, well, there's never a shortage of problems to solve. And, you know, that's one of the benefits of being in so many different industries is that, you know, agriculture isn't the only industry that's facing challenges. And <laughs> I guess you know, it, yeah, if it gets daunting or if it gets too much, it's like, well, yeah, focus and, on a different industry. And it never really is too much. I mean, there's definitely long days, but that's what keeps it exciting. But you also have a great team of people around you that, that you can kind of lean on for support when you need it. So we have a, a corporate services division in Sioux Falls that, you know, helps us out with basically everything we need at the facilities level here from a corporate perspective to people in marketing that I can lean on for certain resources. You, you're never really alone. And so like whenever whenever it is too much, you get a lot of people that you can reach out to. I mean, we're, our organization sits around, you know, 1400 people or so right now. Wow. That's incredible. With a, with an office here in Regina. Yeah. Um, so what does the future hold for you? Where, uh, where do you think you're going to be in the next five, 10 years? Well, the, Raven opens up a lot of opportunities for me. I mean, I can move from you know our applied technology division to engineer films or. But you or just mentioned. Start, but you but, mentioned before. But, where did your CEO start? <laughs> where did our CEO start? Oh, he, Dan. <laughs> Dan started at Raven as an intern. Which uh, is such Raven, a cool story. Of, yeah. Oh. Yeah, in Sioux Falls, and now is our, you know he's been our CEO for a number of years now, and led us to a lot of success, which is exciting. But you know, there's opportunities for everybody at Raven. For me specifically, I mean, I still love the vision of sticking with solving those problems in agriculture, especially being from Saskatchewan. Right? I, have, I have no immediate desire to leave Saskatchewan. And well, like so it's, it's like the, the mega center for farming. Exactly, like, exactly. So I've always had this dream, which was uh, if you've ever taken a road trip through Western Canada, Saskatchewan in particular, it's farm fields for as far as the eye can see. And what I want to see one day, whether I'm driving out to the cabin in the summer or on a road trip is these autonomous platforms that we, you know, design, build and produce and put out in the market, uh, out in the field, you know, that's <laughs> kind of what I've always wanted to see right from, right from the start. Yeah, honestly, walking, well, we, we need to go to the garage now, but walking through and seeing these things, there's this moment of like, I feel like we're living in the future, but a couple of years time, this may be the norm like this. It almost has to be because there's no going back the other way. Yeah, no, and that's, that's the hope. That's what we're, we're pushing for. What do you say about, um, you had a really good answer for this before about autonomous vehicles taking jobs away from the general population. Oh yeah, now that I'm on camera, I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, it is a really common misconception. So um, everybody always says, you know, a, autonomous equipment is going to take away jobs in agriculture when the reality is uh, we have so many job vacancies in Canada. In Canada, it, this problem is not exclusive to Canada. It's throughout a lot of the world. 
Uh, the skilled, skilled labor shortage is one of the biggest problems plaguing the industry. So not only is this not taking jobs, it's actually going to create a lot of high value positions through, you know, at farms or, or with companies like ours or other OEMs, uh, because it, it doesn't remove the farmer from the, the farm, it removes them from the field. Yeah. Basically. They're, they're still managing their business, so they're still managing their, their destiny in a sense. They just get to employ autonomous equipment to, to get those tasks done. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like robots aren't controlling the farm vehicles and programming and running. Like There's so many other jobs that are around it now, but you're safer because you're not yeah. actually on the implement. You're not actually there. And I mean, talk about farm safety as one of the issues. Like That's pretty cool to know that you're a part of a company that's actually helping like literally save lives on farms. For sure, yeah, no, it's it's definitely been exciting to be a part of and, you know, I've, farms more and more each year are exactly like a business in a lot of ways. The the best decisions that you make are made from some diligent research and, and a lot of data, right? And so what this equipment also gives us the opportunity to do is help the farmer make more data-driven decisions for, you know, the next growing season or, you know, even better in real time in the field. For sure, because you could put any other sensor on it now and grab data. Oh, I never thought about that either. Huh. Yeah. And a lot of that is out there today. What we have the benefit of doing is pulling it all together onto a platform through, you know, Raven's core technologies and now our autonomous offerings, because all of the products that we've historically built at Raven have been, you know, to advance automation in the industry, right? They've been, you know, gradually making the day-to-day the -day tasks more autonomous. And now we have a platform that we can introduce to the market to actually take those technologies and operate them in the field. This is like Henry Ford driving out with the automobile being like, <laughs> guys, we're changing the market. Just wait and see. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's nice because that's what helps keep everybody excited here too. You really are a part of something, something pretty impactful. Well, and we're Saskatchewan, so we don't brag about anything. We're not number one at anything. And it's more, I guess, maybe not a Saskatchewan, maybe it's a Canadian thing that we suck at marketing ourselves. But yeah, I'm like- number one at a lot of things, we're just modest. Yeah, yeah. we don't brag about it. I'm like, but to be number one at farming and to be number one at what we're doing here, I just, that's such a cool, such a cool story and I, I can, I'm like I'm stealing some of your your passion or your pride for being here because I'm like yeah you're in my backyard I can talk about you guys <laughs> should we go downstairs yeah absolutely so we this is a 15,000 square foot shop that we're in right now and its intent is going to be to uh, service support uh, a lot of our autonomous platforms as well as warehouse uh, and distribute some of our uh, Raven core products to the Canadian market Wow. so so this piece of equipment that you're looking at right here is our Raven Autonomous platform. And what this will do is perform a lot of the same functions as a tractor, but autonomously. You'll notice that there's nowhere on this piece of equipment for you to sit. Um, it's Everything is pre-programmed uh, onto your tablet and you would attach an implement to it, whether it be a, a sprayer uh, or a fertilizer spreader. It sits right in the center of the chassis. You're kind of in the belly. Uh, and then when uh, this is out in the field, it'll go and operate that implement autonomously. So instead of having to have an operator in the cab, uh, you just get to watch this do its thing. It's a giant remote control car. Basically, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's a really, really technical. And the other thing is I, I, when I thought autonomous tractor, I always thought it would be a tractor. But that makes no sense because it's, it's never just a tractor. It's a tractor pulling something, a tractor doing something. Yeah. So you created yeah, you, like, I can see how some people saw this and be like, what the hell is this? But it actually makes so much more sense. No, it's it's a unique design for sure. And uh, I wouldn't say universally, universally applicable to, to every agriculture region in the world, but in Western Canada, it definitely addresses a lot of the, the problems that we're up against here. Will it work in minus 40? Will it work in minus 40? No, but I hope you're not doing too much farming in minus 40. <laughs> that was the one I was going to try to stump in. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. What kind of farmers out there in this weather anyway? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, <laughs> maybe there's an opportunity to employ it to, to plow snow on your walk. But I mean, hey. even then, I don't know how bad you want to be doing that in minus 40. Or <laughs> yeah. having to go repair it out in the, the snowstorm. Yeah, exactly. Not fun. No. So. A farmer gets this, puts it on their land. Basically, they treat it just like a tractor then, right? Yeah, in a lot of senses. So uh, if you have a tractor, uh, you'll use that to connect to you know a number of implements and you'll operate them in the field. With our autonomous platform, what you're going to do is uh, drive it on. These hooks uh, will connect, will basically lift your agricultural implement into place and it becomes one with this unit, essentially completing it. 
And then once it's in the field, whether you're uh, spraying product through the, the Patterson sprayer that we have, or applying granular fertilizer with the, uh, the new leader fertilizer spreader, it will take us out to the field and perform that task by itself. I mean, it's, it's, taking, it's still taking the farmer's instructions. So that path plant, path plan uh, is pre-populated. So that like for their field, so I have my field of canola. Yeah. I plot the plan yeah, so and then I go for coffee. Uh, not not quite yet. That's, that's when you talk about where we want to go, that is where we want to go. Kind of a, you know, level four, level five autonomy where you don't have to have somebody uh, watching the equipment because this product is new. Uh, we still want eyes on it while it's in the field. And I mean, the benefit is, is it's an exciting thing. So a lot of people want to be watching it anyway. So that, 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 hasn't, been, that hasn't been a tough sell. Um, but what a farmer would do is map out the boundary of their field or the perimeter, and then any obstacles that they have on the interior of that field. And then this will populate a path plan on their tablet so they can take a look at it and say, okay, uh, this works for me or no, I want to adjust the AB direction or the number of headlands that I want to do. Uh, you, you make some modifications for the specific implement that it's attached to. So it's not like a Roomba. You don't just let it go. And no, it you don't just, no, you don't just let it go. You're, you're still, you're still in control of what I'm it's like, doing. In the I field. wish I had that technology on our Roomba because then you could program it to do better floor. Yeah. You're, you're still in control of what it's doing in the field. And I, I mean, I mentioned that I came to this company to, to Raven through acquisition. Uh, but for many years, Raven was our biggest technology supplier for uh, this platform. So oh, things, no things... way. So you actually were working with Raven before. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no so, <laughs> so they were providing the technology for uh, guidance, you know, steering, propulsion, all of that since basically this product's inception. And then when we were looking to raise money in 2019, uh, Raven stepped up. They'd been a part of the project since the beginning, and it was an easy transition for them to say, you know what, we've been so involved in this project, we want to take the next step by investing in it and, you know, taking a majority investment in, in 2019 and then completing the, the full acquisition of the company in, in 2020. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. So this is what I mean by like, we're sitting in the future of farming right here. Like this, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. as there is other trucks around, it's like, well, it's, it's a thing of the past now. Yeah. So that's what this facility will be. I mean, it's a little empty right now, but you'll have to give me some time. We did just move in a, a couple <laughs> months ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's only been a few months yeah. and you already have four in here. Wow. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Jeez. Oh. Too cool. That's exciting. So if you want, you can go take a look at this one over here. This one um, in the service bay has a fertilizer spreader attached to it right now. So even though it's the exact same chassis, uh, what you can see is this one has an implement attached to the new liter fertilizer spreader that essentially completes the unit. Now, so the farmers would just have these different implements basically, like they, but a much smaller than what they would currently have because you don't need any wheels. Correct, yeah, yeah. You actually remove quite a bit of cost while saving the technology, right? So if you think about, um, well, uh, like, a an air seeder, for example, that's intended to be towed behind a traditional tractor. Uh, there's a lot of steel, a lot of wheels, axles, and everything and hitches that are on that air seeder just to facilitate it being towed behind a tractor. But if you can remove all of that and essentially carry that implement while saving the same technology that puts the seed and fertilizer in the ground, yeah. uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're removing a lot of unnecessary costs from the implement. It's the future of farming. Yeah. We think so. Do you ever have moments where you just kind of smile into the distance and realize that you actually are working on like an industry that is evolving so fast, but you guys are on the cutting edge of it? Do you have moments where you just kind of say like, yes. Yeah, we're well, I, I've had those moments all the time working on these autonomous applications for agriculture. But every day when I get another look into the different problems that Raven's solving, like in engineered films or in Aerostar, uh, I get to see like, oh, well, we're kind of doing this in a lot of different areas. Like we're, we're at the cutting edge of this technology in so many different industries. And it's, it's good, it supports a strong business model by diversifying that way. And when you have things like a, a global pandemic that slows down one industry, uh, you might have one like agriculture, for example, that actually picks up quite substantially and we for can sure. move resources around uh, as needed to you know, maintain our obligations to our, our shareholders. And it's Unreal. a lot of benefits to it for sure. Hey, well, thanks a lot for your time today. This is unbelievable. I could stay here all day. Yeah. Do you ever race them? Do I ever race them? No, I mean, they all travel <laughs> the same speed, so it'd be a little unfair. So. <laughs> yeah.
just thinking of there. I'm like, <laughs> has any operator done anything funny? I'm like, don't answer that on camera. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, all by the book. I'm like, I want like the garden version one. Yeah. Like my, uh, <laughs> like remote control. Those I exist, can put anything right? on. Actually, yes. But I'm like, if we're out, you could put pops on it and have them delivered to you by the pool. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is fascinating. Okay, thanks so much for your time today. Yeah, no sweat. Thanks for coming by. Um, welcome. One last time, tell kids why they should stay in Saskatchewan. Why is there a technology they? booming here? I, our investments in technology in Saskatchewan are increasing, and I've, I've had an awesome opportunity to take a look at that because when we were looking at where to locate our next headquarters, uh, well, we got to meet with so many of those partners that are helping facilitate that technological advancement, whether it's, you know, government trying to make business, uh, make, trying to make Saskatchewan an easier place to do business, to the collaboration that exists between financial institutions and even other industry partners uh, to say, hey, you know, this is the kinds of things that we've learned from starting up a tech company in Saskatchewan. I mean, there's just so much openness and collaboration in the province that it's, it's an easy place to do business for sure. For sure. Thank you.